serving the community in right. Dallas. Um, still at that time doing some patrols locally. Mm -hmm. How did y'all decide to, you chief, if I'm correct, Babu, mm -hmm. how y'all all come together and say, hey, you know what, we're going to start, we're going to create Huey P. New Gun Club. I'm going to tell you my part of it. I, you know what I'm saying? I can't really speak Babu, uh, Babu and Rakim, of course, how they parts, how, yep. what they feel. I'm going to tell you my part. My part was I ran around with Changa, uh, Walter Higgins, you know what I'm saying? He just ran for District 7 <laughs> in the city of Dallas. I ran around with Stephen Benavidez, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at that time, a, 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 a cornerstone activist in the, in the community, you know what I'm saying? I ran with them, and we was concerned about policy, right? And so with us being concerned about policy, uh, with us being concerned about policy, I said, I want to make my part of it, I want to make it a little militant. Cause they was, cause, cause up until that point, I learned really, I learned like how to do open record requests from with them, with the Dallas Community Organized for Change. We were doing open record requests on police brutality statistics. A lot of people don't know, like, okay, now it's popular, but when DCOC was out there doing open record requests, filing uh, complaints, uh, federal complaints against the city, it was very unpopular. We did this in 2013, man. You know what I'm saying? So we we did open record requests and we found out that. I don't know, 40 unarmed individuals had been killed by Dallas police in a 10-year period. And we thought that was just crazy. Wouldn't nobody say nothing about it. So when when all that was happening, because we it wasn't getting the attention, because we kept trying to do press conferences. Yeah. I mean, police brutality just wasn't a hot topic at that particular time until later on until Michael Brown. So what I, what I basically did was there was a brother that I, I had reached out to, and I knew he was a rider. You know what I'm saying? I reached out to him. I talked to him on the phone. I said, man, I want to do an open carry uh, demonstration in, in Dallas, in South Dallas. He said, um, I, I based my, my time frame off his work schedule, I'm trying yeah. to say. It was August 20th. This was before Michael Brown. This was like, uh, when was this? This before was like. Trayvon? No, this was before Trayvon. Trayvon had already happened. So okay. when Trayvon happened, we were trying to do a severe, we were trying to do a citywide referendum in Dallas to get a new severe review board. Of course, we got it now, but that's what we were trying to do in 2012. But with with when with, with this particular situation in 2013, this was before Michael Brown. To me, Michael Brown is really what took that the police brutality part on a national level. Now Trayvon woke folks up 2012, but Michael Brown kind of brought it into police brutality. You know what I'm saying? So I had organized it based upon this one brother's schedule for August 20th. Keep in mind, Michael Brown happened 2009, 2013. So anytime you deal with uh, situations that are emotional, it's all about timing, right? So we got together with that. Babu said we want, he said he wanted to do uh, South Dallas, uh, 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 well, a specific part of South Dallas. Yeah. I wanted South Dallas. He had a specific part, which was which was really, really important. He said we want to go down MLK and then Malcolm X. So basically what, you, what, what people see is when what really started this kind of resurgence of black open carry came from our first, our first demonstration, August 20th, 2014. When you say that, you talking about Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Huey P. Newton Gun Club. The Huey P. Newton Gun Club started this reassurance of black uh, militant culture. Yeah. Before that, it was just taboo. It was something off to the side. It was like if you post a picture with you and a weapon on, on social media, everybody would like take that down. It was like it, you couldn't do that, you know what I'm saying, without somebody speaking against it. So yeah. when we did it, and you know, it was Babu. Babu's ability to kind of keep everybody sort of distant, it was my political part of it because I was already engaged yeah. in in the politics of the police brutality movement. I, he was engaged, but he wasn't necessarily as engaged as I was. I was I was actively trying to change policy in the city, like actively, you know what I'm saying? So it was that and my ability to try to connect with the right contacts and individuals, you know what I'm saying, I, uh, you know, media, et cetera, yeah. that could really combine together and, and blew it up. So if I'm correct, uh Cause, you know, we talking to people that may or may not know. Mm -hmm. Right now, currently, you and uh, Rock Kim, uh, y'all not part of the Huey P. New Gun Club, correct? As it is now. As as the as the organization that exists now, that a lot of people uh, refer to as the Huey P. New Gun Club. No, I decided to uh, create it, uh, the Huey P. New Gun Club Alpha, and the reason why I created that was not to be in competition or conflict with the Huey P. New Gun Club. I'm really concerned about like the politics and ideology. To yeah. me, that's that's most important. It's not about no gun or being sensational or being able to sell this uh, 
crazy stuff that gets sound bites. Like I just never was into that. So how do like you the real the the, the Huey P. New Gun Club that y'all formed together? It was it's somewhat like it was your baby. Correct. So how do you feel like Babu? He's to my understanding is over the whole thing because you got Huey P. New Gun Clubs all across the country now. Right. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about the direction and not the saying but. You know, just be honest. How you feel about it now, and where it's going, and how it is now? Cause it's it's huge now. Uh, I would say you gotta give big ups to Babu. Like after you know the separation, mm-hmm. you know he did. I feel like he did a good job with mm-hmm. growing the membership mm-hmm. and everything. But in your personal opinion, how you feel about it? I think Babu did a, a great job in what made sense to him. You know what I mean? That that's what I would say. He did a great job in what made sense to him mm-hmm. and how he seen it. You know, I think if I would have been engaged, if I'd have stayed engaged, I think it would have it would have went a little differently. Um, I, I'm not one for extreme uh, to what I consider conservative uh, politics in terms of you know the black national aspect. I'm not one big on that. You know what I'm saying? I'm really more. I'm have developed more into like an inter intercommunalism. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm really big on the I, the name Huey P. New. So. When the name Huey P. Newton came about, uh, you know, from that point, from that ideological point, you know what I'm saying, that's why I agree with the name, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, to just take it for example, I'm just going to be, like, valid. Like, a lot of cats, um, and I'll just say some names, there are people out here that sort of disagree with the, with the whole, like, quote-unquote, panther uh, position, you know what I'm saying? Or kind of like the, kind of like the new panther position, so to speak. And so, you say it's people that disagree with yeah. the original Panther position? No, no, with no. With the new Black what, Panther? With, the, with that position. Okay. And, 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 and not to really harp on that, because that's not what this is about, per se, but there, there are some disagreements. And so one of those individuals, of course, is Chairman Fred. And I'm just going to say... Chairman Fred, yeah, Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those people is Chairman Fred. He has a disagreement, you know what I'm saying, in terms of... Um, us terms of you know that part of it, you know what I'm saying? And you know, if if I could speak and I just want to kind of be a mouthpiece for it, you know what I'm saying, uh th- those politics I, I sort of you know got a disagreement with. I think that ultimately uh, black people um, should uh, create a situation where we have complete control of our communities, but I also feel at the same time that it, it is in George Jackson says we we have to use the, the resources of those that may or may not look like us, and sometimes we even have our best interests towards our benefit. And it's a matter of, you know, the method of how we do that. But I think we should do it in a way where y'all fail don't necessarily have to be the one to die. Like, what I got to die for? It's too many other people that's already dying. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I'm not big on black, 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 because it's already enough black blood in the streets. We die with, with black, uh, so-called black-on-black black violence. We die when we deal with police brutality. We die from cancer. We die from, quote-unquote, some ailment that came out in 2020. We die for a number of different reasons. So a lot of people say, well, y'all fail, you know, uh, this is another thing that some people said about me. They say, y'all fail like white folks. And, it, and, and it, that's what they, they say about me. No, I realize that there are some resources that we need to take advantage of and we need to pull it back to our, to, to our camps and to our communities so that we can uplift our communities. A lot of people disagree with that. So that's one of my, principally one of my disagreements, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I understand, uh, you know, to him, and I'm not, you know, shitting on him or none of that or nobody within that formation per se. I just have an ideological disagreement. And then, number one, um, I think they just can go by, uh, go about doing things differently. Okay.